So, kamusta po ang bawat isa? So, in relation din sa message ni Lord tonight, kamusta po ang ating year 2021 so far? Two months na po ang nakalipas, parang ang bilis. So, kamusta po ang year 2021 natin? So far, so good po ba? No? Everything is smooth. So, though syempre alam ko po, bawat isa sa atin, ang prayer natin is, Lord, sana this year maging smooth na po. But, syempre, we are in an imperfect world. So, darating at darating talaga ang time of testing, trials, uh, disappointments, and helplessness. But the good thing is, with the Lord and with His Word, pwede natin itong malagpatan. And ang message na what tonight, maging reminder, no? Na how to face life disappointment. And if we are experiencing it right now, no, I hope and I pray that this message will help you survive. So, kaya tonight po, ang title natin is Wait lang po. Ayan. So, turning bitter disappointment into sleep hope. Sige. So, before we continue, samaan niyo po muna ako sa pangalaman. Um, Heavenly Father, salamat po muli sa gabing ito. Salamat po sa pagkakataon na maari kami makinig ng inyong salita, Lord. Lord, thank you rin po sa bawat isang dumalo ngayong gabi at Panginoon. And bago po ang lahat, kami po muna ay humihingi sa inyo ng kapatawaran sa mga kasalanan na gawa. Lord God, kami po ay hihingi ng paglilinis sa inyo, Panginoon. And tonight, Lord God, nawabigyan niyo nga po kami ng teachable heart and listening ears, Panginoon. Na mangusap po kayo sa amin, Panginoon. And Lord God, kayo po ang may taas na yung gabi. Ako man po ay itago niyo sa inyong tuturan upang ang inyong salita, Lord, ay maihayag without preservation and without restriction. We pray for victorious Jesus so, turning bitter disappointment into sweet hope. So, have you experienced being absolutely helpless? Yung tipong things didn't turn out as you wanted to be. Yung tipong wala kang magawa sa sitwasyon. So, wag na po tayo lumayo, no? Ito na lang yung pandemic na na kinakaharap natin. Maraming beses, uh, maraming tao, they feel so helpless na. Actually, kami rin po nung last year, twice na po namin na pa-rebook yung ticket namin pa uwing pinas. So, wala rin po kami magawa kasi hindi rin po kami makauwi. And ano pa ba, mga businesses, di ba? Um, wala rin silang magawa. Gusto man nila ipagpatuloy yung business nila, pero dahil nga kailangan na isara, so may mga business na nagsasara din. So, but thanks be to the Word of God, kasi kahit ganito yung mga sitwasyon, meron tayong pwedeng matutunan sa kanyang salita. So, ang text natin tonight, matatagpuan sa Exodus 15, 22 to 27. Sige, samahan niyo po ako magbata. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, they went, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days, they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. They threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. So ito po yung time na Alam naman po natin, di ba, 
So, umalis sila ng Egypt. And alam naman po natin yung naging experience nila doon bago sila makaalis din. And then, they crossed the Red Sea. Then, after po nun, ito na nga po yun. Three days silang naglalakad sa desert without water. So, para mas ma imagine pa natin, mas ma- makita pa natin. Yan. Yan po yung um, Mara. Yan po yung Samara. Yan po yung nilakaram po nila. And nakita po natin, di ba, um, napakainit, tapos desert. So imagine nyo po, ako nga po yung imagine ko maglakad lang po ako ng, from dito hanggang sa um, Cerusop, tapos tanghaling tapat. Di ba, pagdating ko siguro dun, di ko alam kung kakayanin ko yan, pero pagdating ko siguro dun, uhaw na uhaw na po ako. What more pa sila, 3 days silang naglalakad ng walang water. So when they saw the water of Mara, they found hope, but it immediately vanished. Kasi nga, yung water is undrinkable. So mapait talaga. Then Moses, sabi nga po sa Exodus 15, 22-23, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of shore for 3 days. Yung nga, nag-travel sila in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. So, sobrang hindi siguro talaga mainom. So, imagine ninyo po, naglalakad sila mga um, 7,000 to million sila. Tapos, so, ikaw yung nandat, tapos nakikita mo yung katabi mo, drain na, drain na. Tapos, yun nga, pagkita mo, wala pa. Hindi nila mainom yung water. So, have you ever felt like that? Merong pang situation sa family, financial, or work situation na uh, it brings you to helplessness. So what should we do now? So stay to the point na po tayo. So what does Mara teach us? So meron po tayong three points for tonight. So una po, number one is do not grumble, cry out to God. So itong cry out to God, nakatuwa lang kasi last man parang twice po po siyang narinig na nadaanan sa isang BS tapos sa isang music. And sabi ko nga, Lord, it's your confirmation. Na ito talaga ang best thing to do when we are in the situation of disappointment. Okay? So may kita natin, di ba po, there are two responses in the midst of helplessness yung sabi natin natin. Sa Exodus 15, 24 to 25. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord. So the Israelites grumbled, but Moses cried out to the Lord. So ano po ba mo na ang grumble? So complain about something. And hindi lang siya basta complain, kundi in a bad temper. So we can either grumble or we can either cry out pag nasa ganito tayong sitwasyon. But alam naman po natin ano dapat ang ating magiging response. Diba po? So, kailangan po gayahin natin yung kay Moses. Okay? He cried out. So, if we are in this situation, let's just let go of our pride and let's lift it up to the Lord. Let's cry out and let's surrender it to the Lord. So, bakit nga po ba? Maybe monitor it. So, why do we need to cry out? So, number one, God listens to every cry and sees every tear of His people. Sabi po sa Psalm 107 verse 6, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. So, narin, nakikinig po ang ating Panginoon sa ating mga iyak. And wala po, ako pinaniniwala na wala pong luhang nasusaya kung ito'y para sa pa. So, yun po. And ito po yung kailangan natin gawin if we are in a point of disappointment or helplessness. Let's just cry out to God kasi nakikinig po ang ating family. And He will deliver us. And I just want to share at this moment a uh, personal testimony lang po. Naalala ko po kasi yung 
Doon na share ko na po ito last um midweek sa Old PH pa po ata. But um kasi ito yung isa sa pinaka kumbaga eh matinding pagsubok na pinagdaanan ng family natin. Kaya lagi ko siyang naaalala and ito po yung time na nagkaroon ng brain aneurysm yung nanay ko way back 2016 po. So actually December 31, 2015 yun nangyari. 10 o'clock in the evening. So lahat syempre nag-anticipate na ng new year. Tapos um, lahat excited na. 10 p.m. biglang hindi na kinaya ng nanay ko yung sakit ng ulo niya. So nagpadala na siya sa hospital and sabi nga brain aneurysm. So at that time, gusto ko mag-rumble kay Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, bakit ngayon pa kung kailan new year? Sabi ko, Lord, bakit ngayon pa? That time, four months pregnant ako kay Bell. And sabi na ng tatay ko, sabi rin na iba, huwag ka nang umuwi. So hindi na ako umuwi that time. Sabi ko, ba't ngayon pa? Kung kailan, everything is okay naman. Tapos biglang nangyari ito. So, Tapos parang, Lord, bakit ngayon pa? Kung kailan? Um... Ang plano namin noon is nag-aayos na sila ng passport and pag nanganak ako, pupunta sila dito. So, I want to grumble. Pero, nakonvict po ako, alam niyo kung saan. Nung kausap ko po yung tatay ko. And then, hindi ko narinig sa kanya na uh, kaya ko to, I'm strong. Kundi ang narinig ko po sa kanya is, anak, I try this to the Lord. I surrender this to the Lord. So, yun po, nasabi ko, ay, oo nga. Ito dapat yung gagawin ko. Hindi dapat ako mag-rumble, kundi ilapit ko kay Lord, i-surrender ko, i-try out ko. And nakita ko po yung um, bunga nito, no? nandun yung calmness ng tatay ko, kahit na siya lang mag-isa na nandun. So, may mga kapatid ako, pero that time nag-aaral din po kasi, and malayo kami sa relatives kasi nasa Manila sila. So most of the time, tatay ko lang nag-aasit sa atin. Nandun yung calmness, nandun yung peace, And andun yung wisdom na binigay ni Lord sa mga decision sa procedure nung sa nanay ko nga. So malaki po talaga ang pagkakaiba nyo if we grumble and if we cry out. As if we grumble, kapag nag-grumble tayo, kahit na gano'n mo kadaming sabihin, after that parang masama pa rin po yung pakiramdam mo. Kahit itulog mo yan, kinabukasan, parang mabigat pa din sa loob mo. And if you grumble, of course, syempre, wala kang peace. And alam niyo po yung parang umiikot ka na lang sa kakagrumble, hindi na natakot. But if you cry it out to the Lord, there will be relief. No? Mararamdaman mo yung relief, and then you will feel the peace. And yung tipong bibigyan ka, niya, bibigyan ka ni Lord ng wisdom to move on, to go on to the next. Kaya yun po, no, number one, do not grumble and cry out to the Lord because God listens to every cry and sees every day of this. So, next point po, why do we need to, why why cry out to God? Because salamat sa banal na Espiritu. The Holy Spirit interprets our cries and brings them to God on our behalf. So, andyan po ang tulong ng banal na Espiritu. Hindi man natin alam paano sabihin in words, but the Holy Spirit can interpret. Sabi nga po sa Romans 8, 26-27, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through words that grow. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Di ba po, napakasarap kaking yan. Andyan ang Holy Spirit na gagabay at susunan sa atin. And po, so next po, why cry out to God? Because every weaknesses or helplessness you have is an opportunity to testify God's power and sovereignty. Sabi nga po sa 2 Corinthians 12, 9-11, But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, there are times po kasi, no, 
Pag mag-isa tayo, kaya nating aminin, mahina tayo. Pag mag-isa tayo, we can try. Pero pag kaharap na natin yung ibang tao, parang ang hirap gawin, parang gusto natin ipakita lagi na we are strong kasi yan po yung kalakaran sa mundo, di ba? Survival of the fittest. Pero ano po ang mas gusto ng Panginoon? No, mas gusto po niya na, sige lang anak, pakita mong mahina ka, pero behind you, ipapakita ko kung gano'n ako makakanggap. Ang power and sovereignty ng Panginoon. And with that, magiging testimony pa yun ng katapat. Amen po ba? Sabi nga po, di ba, sa message last Sunday, let's always acknowledge that our strength is from the Lord. Oh. Yeah. And then, yeah, number two, so number one po, do not crumble, cry out. Number two, listen carefully, obey exactly what God already So there are times na usap na sa atin ang Panginoon, pero we tend to ignore, no? we tend to rationalize, we forget and um, just ignore yung mga comments ng Panginoon na sinasabi sa atin. That's why sometimes the only way for us to learn is for God to bring us to a point of total disappointment and helplessness in order to teach us life lessons where we will begin to hit Minsan po kasi, syempre, alam niyo po yung masyado na tayong maraming naririnig sa paligid. There are times, hindi na po siguro natin marinig ang boses ng Panginoon. Yung still small voice ng Panginoon. That's why, dumarating yung mga ganitong punto. So, gaya po sa Exodus 15.25, di ba po? The Lord showed Moses a piece of wood. He threw it into the water and the water became fit to drink. Diba po? Because Moses prayed, because Moses cried out, narinig niya yung inuutos ng Panginoon. Narinig niya yung still small voice ng Panginoon. And balik po tayo na listen, listening and hearing po ay magkaiba. Hearing, uh, absorb, um, makikinig ka, but listening is different po. Pag ikaw ay listening, inabsorb mo, ipaprocess mo, and if may inuutos sa'yo ang Panginoon, you will obey what God is doing. So katulad po dito, narinig ni Moses yung pinapagawa sa kanya ng Panginoon. But sa Israelites, hindi nila narinig po kasi they keep on grumbling. Same goes to us po, no? Grumbling about what we don't have can blind us to see what we already have. Because the Israelites keep on grumbling, they didn't notice na nasa harap na po nila yung solusyon sa problema nila. Kasi hindi nga po nila marinig yung boses ng They were so busy blaming God and other people that they don't see the answer to their problem. So may times po ba na na experience natin sa so, no? Yung Israelites na experience na nila ilang beses pa, ilang beses na yung kabutihan ng Panginoon sa kanila. But they still keep on grumbling. Kaya there are times, hindi rin nila marinig yung boses ng Panginoon. So when we are in the midst of helplessness, listen clearly to the voice of God and start with what you do have, not with what you don't have. Kasi usually po, ang papagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon, hindi naman po siya mag-uuto sa iyo ng extravagant. Madalas, mga simpleng bagay lang po ang gusto pagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon. Pero yun nga, hindi natin marinig. That's why, hindi natin siya matunod. So, simple lang ang mga comments niya para po mas na-elaborate natin. For example po, na sa ibang Bible characters. For example, si Job po, di ba? He lost everything. His wife sabi, first God. Pero ano yung response na ginawa niya that moment? Na alam ng Diyos na lagi niyang gagawin. He worshiped the Lord. Daniel, thrown in the lion's den. Wala naman siyang sword or anything. Pero ano yung ginawa niya na alam niyang gusto ipagawa sa kanya ng Panginoon? He prayed. Si Joseph, 
absolutely helpless when he was sold by his brothers and later the bank put into prison. Pero ano pong ginawa niya? He continued to pray. Ito po yung mga naging response nila na they worship, pray, and ito po ay mga bagay na nasa atin na na kayang-kaya po natin gawin. We just have to listen carefully and obey exactly kung anong pinakagawa ng Panginoon. Na minsan, there are times na hindi po natin ito nagagawang response. May times na lalamig pa sa. So mahalaga po makinig, makinig, makinig tayo sa sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. Yan po ba? Same goes to us in the midst of disappointment and helplessness, crying out to God and help us hear God. So, and next point po, after listening to God's voice, always remember that God's lessons are for a lifetime, not just for an event. Kung may ituturo po sa atin sa ang Panginoon, ibaon po natin sa ating mga puso. Hindi lang po natin siya gagamitin sa that specific situation, kundi paunin po natin siya habang bumas. Po. Huwag po tayo maging katulad ng Pharaoh. After being helpless in a plague, ito po yung sa Egypt. Before Israelites escaped Egypt, he will harden his heart and even after 10 plagues, his heart continues to harden. So, huwag po natin gayahin yung Pharaoh. No? Pag nangusap na sa atin ng Panginoon, sumunod na po tayo and iba, baunin po natin. No? Ito, ako personally na-experience ko to nung bata-bata pa ako. Bata pa naman po ako. Pero, that's what, siguro mga early, mga early 20s, no? mga 4 years siguro yun, na ay, nasa isang sitwasyon ako na na feel so helpless, I plead to God na, Lord, alisin niyo po ako sa ganitong sitwasyon. And then, naalisin na ako ni Lord. And after, pag okay na ako, babalik ulit ako sa ganitong sitwasyon. And then, praise to God na lang, praise be to God talaga na dumating yung point na dahil sa biyaya niya and pagmamahal niya talagang, tinulungan niya akong talikuran yung sitwasyon. And ganun din po sa atin, no? huwag, na, huwag po tayong, huwag po nating patigas na ating mga puso. No? Pag, um, sumunod po tayo at huwag na tayong bumalik. Kasi sabi po niya sa Exodus 15, 26, If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals them. So if you listen carefully, do what is right in his eyes, pay attention to his command, and keep, bitbitin natin, baunin natin ng mga diseases. Andiyan po ang pangako ng pagkakas. And marami po siyang amazing revelation na ipapakita sa atin kapag ginawa po natin ito mga kapatid. And just sa background, dito rin niya po unang nireveal na He is the Lord who heals. That's our Jehovah. So mga kapatid, isa pang point is, God doesn't give explanation but He gives a revelation of Himself so we can continue to trust. So as we obey the Lord, huwag na po natin hintayin na i-explain pa na, niya sa atin bakit natin kailangan sumunod. Kasi madalas, ang binibigay niya is His revelation pag sumunod na tayo at hindi ang explanation bago tayo sumunod. Katulad po sa Mara experience, diba? hindi naman niya in-explain bakit kailangan nila maglakad ng 3 days, bakit ganun yung two big, kundi after that, he showed a revelation na He is a God who can heal. So, yun po. Para po yung, di ba, kunwari, um, tatalon tayo sa building. Kunwari, nasusunog yung building. Kunwari, sa 15th floor, ganyan. Tapos, 
si, si Lord yung sasalo sa atin, hindi na natin kailang hintayin na explain pa niya paano niya tayo sasaluhin or anong mangyayari sa atin, kundi we need to obey na tumalun sa atin. And doon natin may kita na he can punch. Okay po, mga kapatid. So, yan po. So, the situation in Mara gave God the opportunity to bring a revelation that He is the healer, Jehovah. So, mamaya, mas malawak pa po yan. So, there are many lessons we can learn, but in the moment of disappointment and helplessness, we will learn lessons we will never forget. Lessons we will bring for a lifetime. So, kailangan po natin baunin ito. Wag lang po forget okay na nakalimutan na natin. Let's obey exactly what God always says. So, yeah. Though we hate the feeling of being helpless, let's just trust God and cry out to Him, listen sa sinasabi niya sa atin, and obey exactly kung ano yung sinasabi niya. And let's assure that we will be there. And last po, pangatlo, trust God and leave the result. So, as you obey the Lord, huwag na po tayong mag-bargain pa. Let's just trust God and leave the result. No, kasi sometimes, if we pray and then the answer is not according to our plan, we get disappointed. That's why, Let's learn to trust God and leave the results to Him. Bakit po? No, una, why just leave the results to Him? There are times God is testing our heart. So, naalala niyo po, last uh, two Sundays ago naman, ang message ko diba is about Abraham, yung sinest siya. And nakita po natin yung obedience ni Abraham. So, there are times God is testing our heart. Para po yung testing metal, yung testing um, silver or gold, Di ba po, papainitin yan. Tapos yung residue niya, pupunta sa taas. And then he is great yan. Hanggang pumino ng pumino. So, ganun din po, no? In our life, we need that continual testing so that the unnecessary things in our life will come up and God will take it. Sabi nga po sa Job 23.10, But he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. I will come forth at school. So, napaka gandang malaman na even if we are in the testing period, alam ng Panginoon yan, mga kapatid. And after that, just trust Him. Kasi after nyan, ang result ay para sa good din po natin. Para sa ating ikabubuti din po. And ito yung verse na to very dear din po sa akin kasi ito po yung paulit-ulit ni review ni Lord sa amin yung may sakit po nga na ito. Napaka-sarap alalahan. Ganun din po yung nangyari sa Mara, di ba po? There the Lord made a decree and a law for them and there He tested them. So yes, character will be refined may times na sakit. Pero just, yun, kailangan talaga eh, kailangan magtiwala sa Panginoon and leave the results to Him. Kasi nga, after noon, para rin sa ikabubuti natin. Kasi, sabi sa Isaiah 55 verse 9, di ba? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, hindi mo, may time, hindi mo talaga maaarok ang pamamaraanan ng Lord but just continue to trust mga kapatid. Hindi mo man alam ano yung sinetest tayo ng Panginoon but allow God to refine you and leave everything to Him. Amen po. So, trust God leave the results to Him because a tested faith is a strong faith. And the strong faith Yes, we believe and expect expect a yes na pangahawakan mo yun. But if the Lord says no, strong faith can endure it. Amen po. There are times we give conditions to God like, Lord, 
I will serve you, pero ito po yung kahilingan ko. And then, pag hindi sinagot ni Lord, may time kung saan po tayo, hindi po yun yung strong faith. Because the strong faith involves trust. Ano man ang magisagot ng Panginoon. Trusting in God's process. So like in the Mara experience, strong faith expects a yes. Gaya ni Moses, di ba? But because of his trust to God, kahit na mapait yung tubig na yun, ang ginawa niya is he trusts God. He endured the name. And he just cried out to God. That's strong faith. That's that step. And the next four, why you trust God and give the results? Gaya na sabi ko kanina, gaya po na sabi sa salita ng Diyos, our God is our great healer, our Jehovah. Exodus 15, 26, For I am the Lord who heals you. God can heal us physically, emotionally, spiritually, in all aspects. Mga kapatid, ang Panginoon lamang ang pwedeng magpagaling sa atin. That's why we need to trust Him and live the results. And He knows the best way. Siya lang ang nakakaalam ng best way to heal us. And God is a great healer. He can turn everything beautiful in His earth. That's why magkiwala tayo sa Kanya and live the results. Because He knows what to do. yung po. So, as we cry out to God, no, na po tayo mag-rumble and um, makinig, makinig tayo mabuti. No? Nakikinig tayo. Paano natin mapapakinggan? Of course, through His Word and prayer. And the siyempre, last thing, trust God with the resources. So, ano po mangyayari? No? Conclusion na po. What happens After you cried out to the Lord, obey what He said, leave the results to Him, and even my time, kailangan natin endure yung no. Ano po yung pwedeng mangyari? Ano ang mangyayari? Sabi po sa Exodus 15.27, Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they come there near the water. So what is Elim? It is a place of abundance, refreshing, restoration, and double portion. And all Elim always comes after the healing at Mara. So don't stop at bitter disappointment, mga kapatid. Don't stop, mga kapatid. Dahil mang plano ang Diyos para sa atin. And as a personal experience ko nga na, sa testimony ko kanina, no, if Nag-stop na ako siguro sa situation na yun. Yung sasabi kong mga four years ako nandun sa situation na yun. Paulit-ulit na lang siguro ako mag-disappoint. And hindi ko mararanasan yung joy na magkaroon ng sariling pamilya na tama-tama nag-worship kay Lord. Kasi after po nun, nung inayos na ni Lord yung part na yun, doon lang niya ulit kami pinagsag-sumit. So yun po nun. So, Maganda ang plano ng Diyos sa bawat isa. Don't stop at bitter disappointment. Overflowing blessings comes after learning God's lesson. And ang life na sinasabi ko po na plano ng Diyos, hindi lang po ito huwag natin ikahon sa karangyaan ng mundo. Dahil ang plano ng Diyos, ang gusto niya ibigay sa ating buhay, magandang buhay, buhay na hindi natin itakapahamak, buhay that will lead us to eternity. Dahil yun po ang gusto ng Panginoon, di ba po? ang makasama niya tayo sa kanyang kaharian, magpakain. So don't stop at bitter disappointment, mga kapatid. Let God turn our bitter disappointment into sweet. So yun po, um, as we pray, so I, I pray na, yan po, yan po yung salita ng Diyos. So as we pray, Are you facing are we facing bitter disappointment right now? Are we asking God for something that he says no? Are we drinking in the bitter water of man? No. Let's just realize that all we need is 
God. At may matututunan tayo sa ganitong situation. Let's just let go of our pride. Let's just stop grumbling. Cry out to God. And listen carefully sa sinasabi niya. Let's obey what he's saying. And let's continue. Kahit mahirap, let's continue to trust him. And he goes. Kasi doon po natin mararanasan ang kanyang healing. So, He is our God who heals and He can turn everything to good. Sige po, samahan yung pause sa panalang. Um, Heavenly Father, salamat po muli sa gabing ito. Salamat po, Lord, sa inyong salita. Nawa, Lord, nangusap kayo sa puso ng bawat isa sa Panginoon. And nawa, Lord, kung ano na yung natutunan namin, narinig namin, napakinggan niyo yung gabi, Lord. Gaya ng sabi kanina, Lord, may we listen to your voice tonight, Lord God. Kung ano man yung nais mo ipagawa sa amin, Panginoon. Ngayong gabi, Lord, may we absorb your word, Panginoon. And Lord God, humihirin po kami ng sorry sa mga pagkakataon na nagdagrumble kami instead of turning to you. And tonight, Lord God, laging may, we, may you teach us, Lord God, kung kakaharap man kami ng disappointment in life or if we are experiencing it right now, Lord, may, we, may you teach us to always choose you, Panginoon. May we choose you, Lord God, na kayo yung iiyakan namin. Kayo yung, may we choose na kayo yung papakinggan namin, Panginoon. May we choose na i-obey ano man yung gusto niya ipagawa sa amin. And Lord God, kahit mahirap ang mga institution, may we always choose to trust you, Panginoon. And we do the first thing. Salamat, Panginoon, na may disiplin namin ng inyong salitalo at ilagay sa aming puso. Salamat po sa gabi ito sa iyo lahat ng papuri at pagsamba. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's go. Thank mm-hmm. you.